did, yeah. I, I've been told, I'm not entirely sure if this is true, but from what, from what I've been told, and this is part of the reason why, among many, many millions of reasons why this pandemic sucks, I would have loved to attend at Sanford Bridge tomorrow, but obviously I can't. Um, I've been told during Champions League nights, they really, really bring out like, there's like a, there's like, just like this buffet of food and there's like, they just treat journalists a little bit differently. Um, and Ramjers are very, very stingy when it comes to that stuff. At least, at least so long as I've been going there for games. Um, yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, and I'm coming from like, I come from a bit of an NBA background where I was going to a lot of Raptors games as press. There's like this guy cutting roast beef and there's like this salad bar. There's a guy serving hand gourmet pizza and it's just like a buffet. And uh, and Ram, the only time they'll give you food is on Champions League nights because UEFA forces them to. So they give you a little bit of a knapsack paper bag with an apple, um, some uh, some jamón iberica and some other random stuff like bottle of water. So I really was excited to go to the Stanford Bridge experience, which I never I never got to go to, but. Um, yeah, that's really funny you should say that because you just reminded me of those little bags at the Bernabeu. I'd forgotten about that. And it's true. I spent a lot of my time at Real Madrid Hungary because I'd come <laughs> along to the game or the training ground and I'd completely forgotten to, to bring me my, myself some food. I remember literally thinking there's just no food here. Um, and you're right. One of the things that Chelsea do really, really well, the buffet is absolutely amazing. And it's a really old fashioned um, little room, actually, the press room. It's tiny. And it's always been the same, you know, it's been the same for years and years. And it, it really is too small, to be honest, for Champions League nights. And certainly now, obviously, post-pandemic, um, I'm, I'd imagine they're going to have to do something about it because you can't, you know, even once journalists are let back into that press room, it's, it's pokey. There's, you know, there's a tiny little loo. There's one toilet for women. And now that there's more women in the game, you know, it's, it's insane, really. But they put this amazing spread on. You're right. They have the hot food buffet. They have um, a lovely salad spread. They have a jar of sweets. So you can make yourself a little sort of sweet package to take out with you. And there's puddings. And then at half time, as if you're not full enough already, there's a new spread. Um, so it is great, actually. But since obviously since we've been going, I've been reporting during pandemic and it's just tea and coffee. I'm not complaining, but you have to bring your own, obviously. Um, and I sit in a slightly different place. So instead of sitting right behind the tunnel where I used to, I'm slightly shifted over to the left, One which is not before quite I let you leave, Alison. Mm. You've been to so many different places as a journalist um, around the world, but different media outlets, different clubs. What advice would you have for someone who wants to break in the industry now uh, in this current landscape with all the competition? Is there any pinpoint you know it's very hard to do obviously now like in one like just little you know in one thing you'd say obviously it's a very nuanced take and maybe you could great give a great university course on it but what is one give, bit of advice you'd give to somebody right now who will be wanting to break into the industry yeah I do I have a lot of advice and, and a lot of people come to me for advice so I actually end up launching a podcast to kind of help people break into the industry it's called talent takes time so if anyone wants to check it out it's a free podcast um, but what, what my key message from that podcast and I interview lots of people already in the industry and I interview a few key decision makers as well and, and what they're looking for and the key thing is just doing it so there's a lot of people that say to me, you know, I think I'd be really great. Why won't a company take a chance on me? And I think the important thing is to actually start something. So whether it's a small blog or a YouTube channel or just a really active Twitter account, whatever it can be, because you're gathering your tribe, your followers, people that care about you and your opinions. And that's so important to a company. And I've noticed there are people out there, you know, you don't have to be a certain age or you don't have to have certain experience. You just have to have authenticity and passion and, and a, perhaps a unique platform. And I think companies will love that. And I've seen, you know, I've seen that, uh, you probably know Adam Bader who ended up uh, running Real Madrid's website and social media channels. He started off as a Real Madrid fan and he just did it. He did his um, Real Madrid blog and it eventually got discovered by Real Madrid. The official channel discovered him and employed him. So I just think don't ever be put off by your lack of experience or your age. If you love it enough and you're passionate enough and you just do it and, and, and almost let your ego go. Don't be embarrassed if you've only got 100 followers because we all had a hundred followers in the beginning. Um, just doesn't matter. Those hundred people care about what you've got to say and then there'll be a thousand and there'll be 10,000 and it will build and build. 
Um, so that is my advice, just going out there and doing it and not being afraid to.